it looks so intense and it is very very intense but I assure you that it's intense on flavor but not on heat Hey guys, um, it's Mandy again from Lady and Pups Today we are gonna be making something that is quite unusual I've always had this kind of a fascination about instant noodles I love eating instant noodles but I've always been wondering like whether or not I can make a homemade instant noodle mix that you know I can just whip up a whole batch and whenever I need it I just add liquid and noodle and then voila and so today that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to be making a instant noodle um, dan dan noodle mix we're gonna season the pork first so here I have the seasoning of let me see fish fish sauce soy sauce sesame oil and I'm going to add that into the meat first you find a lot of starch inside um, ground meat ground meat mixture in Chinese recipes because um, it, it gives it a very uh, it gives the meat a more smooth and tender texture so one and a half teaspoon wait hold on what, what is this okay one and a half don't need a lot just a little bit so the starch is over with and now we need three grated garlics when I say grated garlics in all my recipe I I mean it by using a microplane grater okay so here we go and now we need um, a teaspoon of grated ginger sometimes when I feel lazy I don't even peel the ginger before I grate them but today I'm going to be diligent and not take shortcuts I'm gonna eyeball this a teaspoon and then the last ingredient is white pepper ground white pepper what I need is half a teaspoon I about half a teaspoon here after that you just mix it with your hand all you have to do is mix it until everything is um, blended equally and evenly there. So I want to talk about the next ingredient a little bit which is um, pickled jalapeno So obviously this is not a traditional dan dan noodle ingredient um, and, But I'm choosing this because um, the recipe um, uh, calls for um, like a Sichuan style pickled chili which is called pao jiao and I mean it's, it's not only it's hard to find, but the, the quality varies widely. So here I'm choosing to do pickle jalapeno, a quarter cup of tightly, tightly packed cup of finely minced jalapeno, not chopped, but minced. I actually did this in a small food processor. So it can see it's almost like relish consistency. Add a quarter cup canola oil in a non-stick pot I'm sorry again non-stick okay guys um, quarter cup so we're gonna cook the jalapeno first um, I like to do this kind of starting with cold oil it avoids um, the explosion and it's slowly because what we're trying to do here is that we're gonna slowly draw out the moisture um, from the jalapeno so we're kind of making it shriveled and crispy so it's okay to start with a cold oil if you just dump this into a super hot oil um, the edges are gonna burn before um, the moistures are, are evaporated I don't know if you can see this or not but um, the jalapenos are becoming slightly browned and shriveled up and that's kind of when I drain them so now drain the jalapeno press on it a little bit to get all the oil out and then put the oil back to 
the pot. Now we brown the meat. So medium high heat again. And this time we want to start with hot oil, okay? Um, but since it's already hot, I'm just going to do it directly. I think that it's a common mistake when people are making recipes that calls for brown meat. Um, the common mistake is that people don't brown the meat enough. You want all the meat pieces to be all like brown bits, okay? So because all these brown bits are chemical reactions that, you know, the caramelizations that, that taste really good and you want to harvest all that. And yes, it's going to take longer to do so, but it makes all the difference in in recipes that calls for brown meat. If you used a stainless steel or anything else, all the brown stuff is going to end up sticking to the sides of the pot. And we're not deglazing the pot. So all those yumminess are just wasted, you know, to be washed away in the sink. So every when I say nonstick, I always have a very good reason why you want to use nonstick. And in this case, it's absolutely crucial. Otherwise, you're just wasting efforts and time. Once your ground meat is ready, you can return those fried jalapeno bits back into the pot and then just set it aside. The next component we're going to make is um, the chili oil that is going to be a part of the mixture. Um, for this, you're gonna need a very good spice grinder. Okay, I consider a spice grinder a must, must essential tool in the kitchen. And I don't mean like, you know, coffee grinder or anything like that. I want like a big grinder like this with a big bowl that is, um, that you can detach from the machine and that you can wash in um, a dishwasher or, or, or by hand because it's really important that every time after use um, that it's cleaned completely and um, it doesn't have any residual spices from the last time you grind everything. So here in the spice grinder, um, put half of a star anise pot and then um, we have all the spices in here, which is um, coriander, cumin, and curry powder, and sesame seeds. Sorry, the kitchen was getting dark. So I have to turn on my lights. It's a cloudy day today in Hong Kong. So besides all those spices that I've mentioned, you will need most importantly, um, chili flakes. Five tablespoons of chili flakes also goes into the grinder. Now, to the spice grinder. We're gonna go for about um, 40 seconds to one minute. We want a very fine ground. Okay, I've gotten every last bit out. And then prepare um, two tablespoons of ground, already ground Sichuan peppercorn in a small cup like that and have it ready on the side. We're gonna coat the chili spices first and then at the last minute, we're gonna add the peppercorn because you cannot cook citron peppercorn for too long, it's going to get bitter. We're gonna make the chili oil next. Um, one cup of oil, cold oil, we're starting with cold oil again and we have scallions smashed garlic in there i'd say um, medium low heat and it's gonna take a while for for these garlic and um, scallions to start to brown so we're a few minutes in you can see it's like slightly brown on all edges the scallion and the garlic so this is when you remove them with a slotted spoon. Now add the chili powder. You don't have to change the heat, medium low still. 
I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but you can see that the color of the oil has changed, right? It's like darkened significantly. Now you want to turn off the heat. That's when you add the ground citron peppercorn. So keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring because the residual heat is going to keep frying these things and you don't want them to burn. So stir, 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 stir until it's no longer bubbling. Now all there is left to do is to mix everything together with the seasoning. So I already put everything in this big giant bowl. Um, I have a little bit of peanut butter, sesame paste, um, soy sauce, and everything else. Um, you know, it's all in the recipe. But I want to talk about two ingredients inside this pot, which is number one, sesame paste. So sesame paste, um, typically people in North America would probably know it as tahini, which is a Middle Eastern style sesame paste. And that is, this is very different, you know, from Asian sesame paste because it's significantly paler in color and the flavor is um, significantly milder as well and the second thing i want to talk about is in here there is a tablespoon of chicken powder this is basically um, chicken bouillon cubes that is in powder form okay so why add this well a lot of people would say, oh, but it's like artificial flavoring and there's MSG in there. Exactly. I add it for exactly that reason. I actually want MSG in here. So everything in this bowl. And now all we have to do is mix. So the beef mixture and the fried jalapeno mixture and the chili oil goes right in. And all you have left to do is just stir it together. Make sure that you do this very, very thoroughly. So what you're left with is this super intense mixture. And that is your instant danda noodle mix. So this is what it looks like when it's bottled up. How cute is that? Um, you can do your little label. It says instant done done and the dates on it. Once you have this ready, everything takes like three minutes. All you have to do is mix equal parts of the instant done and noodle mix with equal parts of low sodium chicken stock. So I already have my noodles plated and now I just pour the sauce over. I probably made a little more than needed. So I would say that's the proper amount of sauce that you need. It's perfectly um, good to serve on its own, but my personal taste, I like to add even more chili oil on top. And this chili oil, um, the recipe is in my book. It's also on Food 52. It's called my ultimate chili oil. You can do any kind of herbs you like, scallions, that's a standard. And I like to add just a little more chopped pickled jalapeno. Let's give it a test. Wow. I don't say this a lot, but I impress myself. It's super, super intense. It's, I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say, it's the best instant dandan noodle mix. Probably dandan noodle period. It looks so intense and it is very, very intense. But I assure you that it's intense on flavor, but not on heat. Try it. I really, really hope you like it. I love this recipe. So um, yeah, I'll see you next time.